Today we're starting our new series called Talking on the Record. It's all about vinyl, and it's here on the sound of Safe and Sound, Texas. Okay, so today we're talking on the record. This is going to be a series about vinyl. Uh, a lot of uh, the Sound of Safe and Sound Texas is going to be about vinyl, but uh, we're going to really get more in depth on the talking on the record aspects of it because we're going to get into giving you an understanding of uh, the various terms that are used related to the releases. Uh, we're focusing here on uh, releases and pressings, uh, and we're going to show you uh, some spe specific examples of uh, differences uh, that you can tell and uh, why they're relevant and why they're important and uh, some things that you can visually understand. So uh, without further ado, you know, I'm going to be talking a little bit uh, more in detail about these albums, Brother in Arms, Brothers in Arms by Dire Straits. So this is, a, we're going to be doing a comparison on these two. One of these is an OG first press, OG meaning original, original press, before the represses come out, uh, meaning uh, when a record is going to go to market, uh, the label looks at the uh, band and looks at their history and looks at uh, any potential run-up that has come maybe through a pre-release single off of the album that has garnered some interest, and they determine how many of these they're going to press uh, on the original order uh, to get these out into the market. Uh, similar to books, do the same kind of thing to figure out how many initially to put out. Uh, same concept. So uh, what they do uh, on these is then they divvy up the pressing of those records to various plants if uh, the if the uh, demand for it and the volume uh, is beyond the realistic capacity of a certain plant, they'll split it up. Uh, some labels actually uh, had some ownership in a pressing plant, so they prioritize those. I'm not going to get into all those kind of things, but uh, but uh, one of these is an OG, meaning the original press, and the other is actually what's called a club edition. A club edition means that it was released through uh, a club that was set up. Uh, uh, Columbia is the most uh, well-known one, Columbia House. <clears throat> it was operated out of Terre Haute, Indiana. And um, they had uh, basically done this thing where they would have it in magazines uh, and uh, even ads on radio and television. And you would apply and make a, a, a request to them based on a, a grouping of albums that they had available. They did the same with cassettes. And you could get, let's say, 10 albums for 97 cents. And then the, the, the catch was then that you had to buy so many albums per year after that at the full retail price of a whopping like six dollars and 98 cents or seven dollars and 98 cents or more if it's a double album and you had a contract essentially uh that that bound you to that so uh that's how they they did those and those were typically pressed um after the ogs uh, uh after the album had gone to market gained some uh popularity, notoriety, and then therefore it became uh, uh, one that would be uh, enticing in this ad that would be uh, placed in magazines and, and what have you, uh, newspapers for this club. So they're called club editions. RCA also had a club edition uh, series and their uh, subsequent owner, BMG, also uh, did this. But Columbia House is the most uh, well-known one. and. Uh, on uh, this one that is a Columbia house. So we're going to talk about uh, some of the differences that occurred. And this one I'm using as an example for a couple of reasons. The original press uh, was mastered uh, by a guy that you probably have heard of, Bob Ludwig. RL is his initials on uh, the Dead Wax in an album. And uh, he is well known for uh, being kind of the king of mastering, vinyl mastering. 
Uh, he was the gentleman who was involved in the mastering of Led Zeppelin II, uh, that when it first came out, it was, uh, it was uh, mastered so hot and with so much bass that it literally skipped. And they had to pull the album from the market and remaster it so that it was playable. So nowadays, the Robert Ludwig hot mix of Led Zeppelin II is a very sought after album uh, worth uh, hundreds of dollars. Uh, many of them are not in good condition because they were uh, played quite a bit and, uh, and uh, I want to say used and abused. Uh, so it's really hard sometimes to find a really good copy of that. But Robert Ludwig is known for getting the most out of a record uh, that is possible. And the uh, reason I picked this particular album uh, of, of all of the ones uh, that I've seen that Robert Ludwig has done is that the press that then was mastered for the Columbia House is so much different and it is so obvious. Uh, and so I, I thought it'd be a good visual to show you. So what we're going to be looking at in particular, uh, and I'll be showing you some close-ups here uh, in the video, is actually, ironically, the dead wax. So the dead wax on a record, as you know, is the lead out groove, goes toward the center after all the songs have been played. And you can see how wide a band that is. It's very uh, very big area of dead wax, uh, which means that the actual grooves, which are cut, are, are more compressed. Those are actually squished together more. I'll use a highly technical term, squished together. And this is the pressing from Columbia House. Uh, and so when you look at that, you see that, and you take the same exact album now, same same side as I first showed you side one and you look here at how little dead wax there actually is in that area so the groove area the area of the recording those grooves are spread out much more so that means that you can have a much better cut more accurate your uh, your vibrations in the grooves, which are low, low notes and bass, will take up more energy. They have more room to, uh, to operate, and this is cut with a louder a sound as well uh, and a more uh, dynamic range. So just by looking at these two records, I haven't read one lick of dead wax off of it. I can tell that this is going to sound much better. And it does by a measurable margin on any system. Uh, you will you will notice that. So one of the uh, clues that you have then, if you have records that you're looking at, is if you see a very large area of dead wax, and you have on the album side, you know the normal, you know, uh, 14 to 20 minutes of material. That means that that has really been, uh, those grooves are more compressed and the sound is not going to be as dynamic as it would be. I had another album uh, today. I got a copy of a Jude Cole's uh, A View from Third Street. And this was, in fact, the RCA Club Press. And I compared it to my OG. And sure enough, uh, the, the press from RCA had a much thicker dead wax area, which means the grooves were more, more tight together and compressed in the mastering. So uh, I'm going to begin looking now to see if this isn't a pattern on club presses in general uh, and, and why, uh, why that might have happened. But the, the point is that what matters to you is that you, you really want that dynamic range. You want that a stronger base and you want that cut to be such that it's more accurate and not wasting that vinyl because that dead wax area is of no use to you for sound. It's merely for information is put in. Um, Robert Ludwig was a master at uh, doing that and no pun intended being a mastering engineer, but he was a master at really getting the most out of 
a piece of vinyl that he could. And I think the hot mix of Led Zeppelin II is a, just an extreme example of how far you could go uh, with it. And uh, I've heard one, and, and I mean, yeah, there's no doubt it's audibly really hits you in the gut a lot more. And, and so with the Brothers in Arms album, which is a very well recorded album, it was recorded uh, digitally. Uh, that was its main uh, uh, big point when it came to market. It was one of the ones who went DDD. It went straight to digital for compact disc. Uh, it was also recorded in analog, and that was what was used uh, for the vinyl that got cut. Uh, but again, uh, the compression that occurs in a cut that is not stretched out as, as much as it can be across the vinyl will be a negative uh, toward the sound that you get out of it. So it is a very good indication. So if you're in a record store and you run across, let's say, the same album, several copies, I know a lot of times we'll take them out and look at the condition of them, which is exactly right. And if they have a system there, you can even play it. But look for that too. Look and see if there's differences where you have a lot of wasted uh, vinyl in the dead wax uh, where they haven't cut. And yet a same album on the same side has a much uh, longer cut towards center. Uh, that's going to be a better sounding album. Just the physics of it say that. So that's one aspect of the... Uh, cuts and the presses and the differences that you can see, the things that you can look for, and the things that make a difference in what you get. A lot of times people will say, well, what's the big deal? I go on Discogs and one type press is, you know, 12 bucks and another's 20 bucks and one's five, but why the difference? Why? And these are some of the things that contribute to it. Uh, I can tell you anything that was mastered by Robert Ludwig, uh, originals uh, especially are going to have a premium on them because of the quality and because of uh, the work that he has done uh, through the years, through the decades, he's still active and is sought after. Uh, and I hear he gets uh, uh, upwards of $100,000 per album when he masters one. So, uh, he has earned that, I guess, in his in his career. So this is something to look for in your vinyl. And when we're talking on the record, these are the things that on the LP make a difference and things that you can tell now and look for and hopefully get a better process, a better cut, a better final result, the sound you get based on these visual cues that you get. Thanks for being with me and talking on the record at the sound of Safe and Sound Texas. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe and comment and like the video if you did. Share our page with your friends. We've got more coming. Thanks a lot. Take care. Time out. Stop the presses. On our last show, we had a contest and we actually had a winner. A user named Dobie Prime, a YouTube user named Dobie Prime was the winner. And you'll see their uh, response up above. They guessed that the name of the album for the T-shirt I was wearing from Jars of Clay was called Much Afraid, which was correct. So that uh, response came like within six hours of uh, launching that video. So uh, I sent a note off to Doby Prime and haven't heard back yet. So I would like to reach out if Doby's out there. If you know who Doby Prime is, reach out and let them know if they uh, will email me at this email address, sound at safeandsoundtexas.com, fully spelled out, uh, and give me uh, their information. Uh, I will allow them to select a gift. I've got several to pick from. They're vinyls that are sealed, and so I'm going to give them an option of what to pick from. So it, it's worth watching. So if Adobe Prime is out there, uh, let us know. And again, thanks again for watching the sound of Safe and Sound Texas. See you next time.